Hey guys, Chris from Versus 3D. I'm back with another video. Today we are going to talk about the Anycubic Photon S. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This again is Chris from Versus 3D or Captain America. Whatever. Anyway, um, so today we're going to do a video on the Anycubic uh, Photon S. It's a new DLP printer from Anycubic. They were kind enough to send me one uh, for this video. So thank you, Anycubic. Um, I've already gone ahead and unboxed it because unboxing resin printers is extraordinarily boring because they're already assembled. So let's go through what's in the box. But before we do that, take a minute to click down in the bottom over there and click the subscribe button. Don't forget, click the subscribe button. It's right down there. Um, anyway, so we have the printer, which comes basically fully assembled. Ta-da! But what comes with it, might you ask? So it comes with 500 mils of any cubic resin. I got green, my least favorite color, but that's okay. Uh, this is the resin vat with the FEP already installed, the build platform. It does come with an extra piece of FEP, another delightful full color manual, which we will go through a little bit comes with several pairs of rubber gloves, which you should use. I'm terrible, I don't typically use gloves, and I've seen and heard some horror stories about people getting resin burns, and I really should start using them. Uh, they also include this little mask, just in case you don't want to breathe the resin, you can use this. A little bag of tools, a little bag of extra screws, a USB flash drive, a nice plastic um, tapered on one side. Uh, they suggest this as a print removal tool. When I go ahead and make some prints and show you, I typically save these and I don't want to scratch them up at all because what I do is I'll actually use these when I'm trying to clean the fat, get the resin out. So I like to keep that nice and like scratch free and whatever. Uh, also they give you, I don't know if I got too many by accident, but they gave me 15 of these little, um, they're little paper filters. So if you want to take the resin out of your vat and pour it back into your bottle, I typically am not one to do that, but a lot of people do. Um, this will actually filter out any little resin bits that have cured or anything that has gotten into the resin. It will filter it out so you're getting nice clean resin back in the bottle. And the power supply. And as of late, I have been terrible about keeping power supplies the way they're supposed to be, so as soon as I take something out of the box now, I label it. So that's all our stuff. Let's move on. So I have a couple notes right over here on my phone and I'm going to be looking at them. So um, just a couple things before we go ahead and do the leveling on this. The um, this is the Photon S, so there were a couple of upgrades. Now, from info that I've seen, some people were actually complaining that the Photon S isn't made of metal. Honestly, I find that a bonus, just personally. I own a D7, a D7 Plus, and a D8, and they are heavy because they're solid metal. And if I have to move one, I'm old. They're heavy. Um, this is plastic. It's not flimsy. I mean, it's not rock solid like it would be made of metal, but it's a trade-off. It's a few pounds lighter just by not having it made of metal, so it's nice. I don't think it's too flimsy, so you be the judge when you get one. Anyway, so the other differences, um, I'm going to look at my cheat sheet. It turned off. Biggest difference that I think is the most important is the Photon S, actually, they added these two linear rails on either side of the z-axis which is going to be a massive improvement for stability than anything else. My other machines, um, they do run on rails which is really nice so they are super stable. Uh, another one is uh, the print volume is just ever so slightly taller. It's a centimeter so 10 millimeters. Um, so you get a little bit more height out of it, which is nice, especially when you're trying to squeeze something in that you go, oh, it fits, oh, it's just too tall. 
and you have to scale it down. Uh, another one is, oh, they changed uh, the UV light system, so they call it a matrix light system that kind of focuses the light more directly where it's supposed to go, so there's not really any bleed outside. If you've had another resin printer, like I said, I have a few, sometimes the light can bleed and it leads to a little bit of a messy print, but this supposedly has fixed that. And then uh, the touch, they have improved the touchscreen and the UI, and uh, they added uh, dual air purifiers inside, so it's supposed to negate some of the smell. I personally don't find most resins super stinky. I have my resin printers down here. They're actually in my office because I ran out of space in the workshop. So I work with them, and as long as the fans are running, I don't really smell anything. Or I shouldn't say that. As long as the fans are running, it doesn't really bother me. That's better. So let's go ahead and start leveling. So the things you need to level it are the build plate, a plain old piece of paper. I just cut it down so it fits. And either the three millimeter Allen wrench that came with it. I like my drivers, so I'm gonna use my driver. And that's all you need. Okay, so a funny thing happened on the way to making this video. I didn't say anything at the end of the video, but now I'm back after finishing the entire video. Um, we'll continue after this, but anyway, so when I went to film the first uh, time lapse, I went to put my camera into time lapse mode and it was already in time-lapse mode, which means I shot all of the close-ups before that in time-lapse mode, which sucks. So all the leveling that I shot and everything like that is all in time-lapse mode, or you can just watch this angle and not see anything here. So I thought I would clean the printer out and do it again and show you how to do it. So anyway, let's do it again. So what you need to do to level this guy, it's actually really easy. All you need is a piece of paper that is cut to fit inside there and a three millimeter driver. It comes with one, not this one. I like this one, so I'm using it. So all you really do, it's super easy. So we're gonna cut to this camera right here and show you. So you go to Tools, Move Z. So now I'm gonna just move this right to home because it will stop before it gets to the actual screen because there is a, a limit switch there. Okay, so now since this is already level and you don't have to re-level this bed all the time, I'm not going to actually unscrew it because I have a beautiful level on here so I don't want to change that, but I'm still going to show you how to do it. So what you do is you're going to take your piece of paper and slide it right under here. And then you're gonna go down and you're gonna stay safely in the 0 0.1 millimeter movement and you're gonna move it down. And you wanna just keep feeling until you feel resistance. Before you do that, you are going to take your three millimeter driver and go right in here and loosen this grub screw. Okay, so that way your bed is gonna be floating a little bit. So now I'm gonna keep moving this down 0.1 millimeter at a time until I get some resistance. Just about there. Okay, so now I've got some resistance. And of course it's not even in there, so let me move it up one, or two, or three. Okay. So make sure your paper is in there evenly. So I'm gonna go down three, four, and just keep going 0.1 millimeter at a time. Now I'm getting there. Until so you have, now that's nice and tight. Now I can pull that, but I can't push it. So what you would do is now you wanna hold gently, hold gently but firmly hold the bed in place and then you want to tighten 
the scrub screw up again with your three millimeter. Okay. Now your build plate is flat. Okay. So now we're going to move back up a couple. So we'll say five. So now I have free movement again. And then, because what happens when you do that, it may or may not shift the height of this. So you move up till it's loose and then do the same thing. Move right back down. So now I can, I have a lot of good grip there, but I can still move it back and forth easily. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go down one. Oh, there it is right there. So I can pull it forward and I have nice even tension on both sides. It's not coming out faster or slower on either side, but I cannot push it in. So that means this is where I want my zero to be. So I'm gonna go back here, hit one, and I would hit Z zero. That zeroes out your, your build plate, so now it knows exactly where it needs to be. So then I'm gonna go back here and move the Z. I'm gonna go, just go back to home and that raises it up. So that's all you need to do to level your bed properly. That is now level, that's exactly how I did it the first time. Wish you could have seen it, but you got to see it a second time. Well, I got to shoot it a second time. So let's go back to the rest of the video and then you can laugh at me at the end. Now I'm just gonna put the resin bed in place. So I'm gonna take the bat and the way I tend to do this on my other machines, so you always want the little pori spout. Well, you don't really, it doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna put the pori spout facing in, or facing out, sorry, and carefully slide it in. I personally have cracked an LCD on one of my other printers, just not being careful, so I'm super careful now. So you wanna slide that in, and I always keep these finger tight screws here just right about just above so now there's two little grooves in there so I'll just lower it just a, a little bit till it barely touches on one side and then I slide it back and forth so now I know that's in the groove so I'll tighten a little bit more and then do the same thing over here. Same thing, I know it's in there, so then I'll just tighten these down. And do not over tighten these. Tighten them down just enough so the back doesn't move. That's all that matters. So now we're pretty much ready to print. Now we have to slice up a model and get it on the machine. Okay guys, so here we go. So I've opened up T2Box 1.5. You can download that free from their website. I'll try to remember to throw a link in the description. Uh, it's basically just an upgraded version of the Photon S software anyway. So what we're gonna do here is I am going to drag a model from my other screen over to here. Now, as you can see, it's giant. I want to print this fantasy castle because I've never printed this. And I think it'll be a nice print to test out the photon for the first try. So nice thing about this is it actually knows the model's too big and it asks you to scale it. So I hit yes. And it is now the right size. So now we have the model here. And I just want to run it in the other direction uh, so it's running the long way. So I'm going to just go over to rotate and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And then if you look at it from the top view, it's still, it's just pretty much the entire build plate. So I want it to be just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to bump it down to 90%. And then I'm going to just center it, make sure it's all right in the middle. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to do several prints in this whole video. So for this one, I'm just going to go very simply. I'm, this model does not need support, so I'm just going to run it as is. Now, I use this for several different printers. So you can click on settings and see the different printers here. Or 
you can just choose the printers here. Now if I wanted to say switch to my D8, it will change the build platform right there. But Photon S, that's exactly what we want. So if I wanted to use supports, I would click this button over here and I will get into that in the next slice. But for now, I'm gonna set it to Photon S and I'm just gonna hit slice. Now depending on your computer, this could take 30 seconds, a minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, could take a half an hour. So it all depends on the power of your machine. This machine is pretty powerful, so luckily it won't take long. Now once it finishes, it drops you into a split screen so you can see your model, and you can also see your slice preview. So it starts off at the top, so I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom. Now this is the first layer on both, and you can just drag up to see the model as it's printing. Or you can hit the little arrows here and hit play and it will go automatically. For me, it's a little too slow, so I typically move it. So now I'm gonna hit save and I'm going to save it right to the flash drive that came with the Photon. Now, I find with other printers, you cannot have spaces or long file names or anything like that, so I'm just gonna call it Fantasy Castle and save it. So now it's right in the file, and again, depending on your printer or your computer, it could take a few minutes. Also, if you're not using a USB 3 port, it could take longer. Okay, so it's been successfully written. You can open the folder if you want, or you can just eject the drive. All right, so I ejected the drive, and now we're ready to take this file back over to the printer. All right, I'm back. So back over here to the printer, what I've done is I've moved it a little bit, and I put a piece of plastic down. I tend to do that. I have one under my other machines just in case resin splashes around. Now, before you handle resin, you should be wearing gloves and stuff. I think I will. So I'm gonna go get my handy dandy any cubic gloves that they sent. Okay, now I have gloves. Now, I'm not gonna be using the any cubic resin because uh, luckily for me, again, I have a local, I have a bunch of local stores that kind of like this uh, help support local people. So Digitmakers, uh, so digitmakers.ca just launched this week, well this week when I'm shooting, just launched their own line of resin. So Ali, the owner, was nice enough to send me a bottle. So I have it right here, it's a D3D brand. Um, this is actually their bio-based resin and I checked with him to see what the difference was and this is actually biodegradable, so it's kind of nice. Not exactly sure how it will work out long term, but it's nice, gets a little bit more environmentally friendly. So you always want to shake your resin up. And he sent me green, again, my least favorite color, but hey, he sent it to me, so it was nice. Um, I do get a lot of my stuff from them. I got my very first printer from him. Super nice guy, and I'll put a link to his website in the description box. So here we go, gloves. Okay. So I have the flash drive, and it just pops in the side here. Which way? That way. Okay. So notice I brought the build platform pretty much all the way to the top, just to make it easier to pour the resin. Let's see if I can do this. This is only going to take, we said about 70 grams of resin, but I'm going to pour more in because we're going to be doing more than one print. 
So I'm just gonna carefully, as to not spill it everywhere. I'm gonna go about, not even halfway up the bat, it's about a third. put this handy dandy spill proof thing back on there. Marketing placement. Um, okay, so now I'm just gonna close the printer. Take these stupid things off. And I'm gonna hit home. And I'm gonna hit back and back again. I have another camera over here. I know you can see it, but that's okay. <clears throat> I am gonna set that up for a time lapse for this too, although time lapses on resin prints aren't super exciting until the print gets higher. So the first probably hour or so is gonna be super boring, but luckily it's time lapse. All right, it's honed. So hopefully we did everything right and we'll have a print in about seven hours. Okay, so now sticks in there, I'm gonna hit print. And then these are the two files that were already on the USB stick. And I'm not zoomed in right now because I'm setting up for a time lapse. So I'm going to hit the bottom one, which is the print that we just sliced. Shows a nice picture of the castle there. And I'm going to hit play. But I'm not going to hit play until I set the time lapse up. So pretend I hit play. Beep. Alright guys, it's been about seven and a half hours and the print is done. As you can see, there it is. Score. Um, so I brought out some other supplies that I have. Um, what I typically use is most of the time I will use uh, resin away from Monocare to clean my prints. It's very expensive. So a lot of people choose not to use it if I run out or if I just don't have the extra cash to get some. Walmart brand, 91% alcohol works great. Always have some paper towels handy. And I know like I said earlier, I typically don't use the little spatula that they, uh, that they provide because I like to keep that nice and nick free so I can clean the, the FEP. So I just use a metal spatula print removal, paint, they, you, you know where to get these. Um, and then I just have a tub. This is actually just a Rubbermaid container with um, some of the resin away. So, paper towels are key. At least in my house they are. So I tend to just kind of do this right in front of the printer. Also, I always have the trash barrel kind of right below what I'm doing here so I can just kind of drop things in. And I'm going to be safe. Once again, I'm going to wear gloves, but I'm going to wear gloves from my glove box because they're freaking cool because they're black. And they actually fit my hands because I have kind of small hands. So anyway, so now you can see on the printer, it actually says print finished. And I'm not sure if you're supposed to hit enter or return, so I'm just gonna hit enter. Okay, good, that worked. Pop it open. Now I'm gonna just hold the build platform with one hand, loosen the knob, and bring that right over the paper towels. And looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to kind of gently, actually I'm going to do it from the side here because the back gets messed up a little bit. Whoop, wow, 
easy removal score All right now I'm gonna take that and just put it right back on now because of the way this printer levels we shouldn't have to level the bed again for the next print so now typically I would have a pair of tweezers or something kicking around here but I don't so I am just going to do this and drop that in my resin away. I am also while I'm at it going to kind of swoosh the spatula around a little bit in the resin away and then immediately wipe it off because I have ruined so many of these things because I'm lazy and I don't do this and then the resin will cure on it and then it just doesn't work well and eh, whatever so Close that guy up. Give it some smooshing. And then I tend to let these sit in here for a little while just because it really will get rid of any of the resin that's on this guy. So, all right, score. Looks like we're ready to slice a different file. This time we're gonna slice something that's gonna use supports and I have a really, really great model to show you guys. So let's go back to my computer. So again, we're back in G2Box and I've got an empty window here set up for the Photon S. And this time we're gonna use a model that needs supports. So I've got a really cool model. Um, you guys, if you're watching any of my other videos, you will see that there's a few people that I really love uh, their designs and this is no exception. This is uh, one of the newest models uh, that David Ostman released. Uh, he's under Eastman 3D. This is on his Patreon page, so please don't ask me for this file. If you aren't one of his patrons, you cannot get this file. But if you are one of his patrons, you can get this file. So I'm just going to drag it in from my other screen. And there it is. It's Wonder Woman. So this is a great... Uh, model that will show how to use supports without having to use a ridiculous amount of supports. So one thing I find with Chi2 over pretty much any other slicer for resin is it really does supports well and it puts them where they're supposed to go. So something really important to know if you've never used a resin printer before is this isn't the same as FDM printing because a lot of times you're outline if you have overhangs or certain angles outlines um, if you have enough perimeters will kind of support your model where in resin printing that's not the case you have to look for things that are called islands or things that will basically in a resin machine print in thin air so let's just kind of move this around and we'll show you a couple of good examples her fingertip right here will absolutely print in thin air. So what will happen is the reason they're called islands is because in a resin machine, it will cure that one section and then that little piece will float away because it doesn't matter. Just like some of this under part here of her skirt, the ruffling in her skirt would do the same thing. This, is, this model was designed for resin, so he did a great job of minimizing those. So let's go ahead into the support tab and now what I've already done is I set it up because I don't want this to print flat on the bed and I'll show you why. So the reason I don't want this to print flat on the bed is because with the supports coming from here, it will actually, uh, the support base pieces will actually meld into her feet. So I want to raise this up. So I've got it set. So the Z lift is five millimeters. So you can see, and if you look, the software is smart enough to tell you, hey, let me zoom the other way. All these red spots are places that could be a problem. So right now I'm just going to let it auto-generate. For a model like this with a lot of detail, I tend to use the light setting. But what I am going to do is I'm going to make sure I use a raft 
So I'm going to use a raft here. I have it already clicked here. And I'm going to just choose skate. And what that does is it actually places a little raft right underneath the entire model. That way, all the base pieces will all cure right into that. And you've got a much more sturdy model or a much more sturdy support piece for your model. You can pretty much auto support this whole thing. But so the contact shape, I like to have it as none, not the sphere. I know some people really like the sphere, but I find sometimes it can chip away into the part when you're removing them. Middle, cylinder, bottom, blah, blah, blah. So the light, medium, and heavy really adjust these. So you don't necessarily have to do much changing. What I am gonna do is I am just going to click support. You can choose on the platform only. So basically just like any other slicer, if you're gonna put supports from the build platform only, click this one. If you wanna support the entire model, click this one. I wanna support the entire model. And again, this can take an awful long time if your computer is not fast. For me, luckily, it doesn't take much time. Now you're looking at this going, my God, that's a ton of support, but it's really not. In fact, I'm going to add a little bit more, but I'm gonna take a few of them away. So. Once you're in here, you can actually see when I scroll over the model, you see this black line that appears. This is actually going to show me any islands if I'm going from the bottom up. So right here, I can look at this and I know I don't need this support right here, but I didn't click the right thing. So I'm going to click on delete support, click on that, and then just hit delete. And then I'm going to delete the one I actually meant to delete. like this one here. Do I need that support? Let's look. Yep, I actually do. You can see that? That would be an island. That would basically print into nothing. Now let's spin around. Let's see how we did here. Do we need any supports here? Nope. Nothing here on the edge. How about here? Do you see what I'm looking for? Oh, could maybe use one here. We'll pop one in there. I'll probably click add support. We'll put one right here. And possibly need one over here. Nope. All right, I'm not gonna get too crazy particular about this. What I am going to do right now is the light supports I don't feel are going to be enough to support the model. So I'm going to add some heavy supports. And I'm just going to do that under her feet. And I'm just going to add a bunch because it's under her feet. So it doesn't matter. I don't care. You can sand this if it's not, um, if they don't come off clean, you can just sand the bottom. So I'm going to add a whole bunch to both sides. I'm just making sure not to put them right around the edge. So I don't, if I do break one off, that's not a clean break. It won't affect the bottom of her, the what's visible on her foot. There, now that should be enough to support that weight. And here we go. So you can see how much thicker those are. And that should really support the whole model. All right, so we're gonna click on slice. So we go back here and slice that model. Okay, it's sliced. So that took about a minute or less on my machine. So we can see here, and then we can just again, check the slice. And just from looking at it, looks good to me. So we're gonna go ahead and save this. 
save that right back to the Photon USB drive. And that'll take about a minute. All right, Slice was successful, so that's great. Now let's take it back over to the printer and set it up to run. Also, before we even do that, I don't know if you caught that, but it said it was going to take 12 plus hours to print, so there we go. Okay, and we're back over here. So I have the flash drive again right here. I have moved the camera over here so I know it's in the way of the shot. I don't care. You wanna see the screen? That's how it's gonna work. Anyway, so all I'm gonna do now is I'm exactly where I was before. I literally finished shooting that last part, went over slice, now I'm back. So I've still got the model in here, soaking in the resin away. So now I'm gonna take this USB drive and pop it back in the machine and go hit print. And now we have our Wonder Woman file right here. So I'm gonna hit the model there and very simply, Push print. So I'm gonna just show you what the first kind of shots look like on the screen before I jump into the time-lapse mode. So now it's homing, so it's pretty much there now. And then you'll be able to see on the screen in a second. This is actually showing you, which I find really cool, on screen it shows you layer by layer exactly what that particular layer looks like. So I am going to stop here and I'm gonna shift this over to time-lapse mode so you can see the actual print happen. And this is gonna take over 12 hours, so I will see you guys tomorrow. So here's what's happened since we last met. Um, I printed the Wonder Woman. I actually took her off the build plate and uh, I pulled all the supports off and cured her. Now, one thing I wanna mention is I wasn't super careful when I was slicing this. Um, and on the screencast, I don't know if you'll notice, I didn't notice at the time. I'm usually super careful about supports and where they go and what they touch but I wasn't and I got, I'm gonna come closer, I got some support actually, if this will focus, it may or may not, but I'll put some pictures in too. I got some support actually on the blade and it cured into the blade. So you'd have to be really careful when you're supporting uh, resin models. So none of the supports that are coming down actually touch any other parts of the model because they fuse and you'll never get them off. So. I could sand it and fix it, but for this, I'm not gonna. Um, so I cured this, and that's all good. And I cured, finished, printed, cured the castle, and it came out great. I'm gonna put some pictures of these because I'm not gonna even try to zoom in and close up and focus and blah. So I'm gonna take some pictures, I'm gonna insert them somewhere right around here. So overall, I have to say I really, really like this printer. Um, and I, any cubic isn't paying me to do this. So I have to say I really like this printer. I've said before, I have a D7, a D7 Plus, and a D8. And this by far is the easiest one to use. Uh, the software is super straightforward. Um, I really enjoy that. I made some notes over here and I'm gonna keep looking at them. So, uh, first thing, the build plate is super easy to level and it stayed level. I pulled it off, I took the print off, I put it right back in, printed another one. Bam, worked no problem. Uh, also, the, pr the prints come off really easy off the build plate. Um, particularly on my, D uh, my D8, it's very, very difficult to get prints off that. Oh, she fell. 
um, even if it's just all supports and no raft, it's still very difficult because of the way they designed the build plate. So uh, any cubic put, uh, they, they s s surface the coating some, the, the plate somehow, um, where on my D, say my D7s, I'll just sand them off a little, a little bit, get them a little rough, and I have no problem getting the, the prints off. They're a little tough, they stick really well, but they come off. This, the print sticks really well, but it also comes off really easily. So that's a huge bonus. If she keeps falling, I'm not gonna fix her. Um, the, uh, the UI of the whole touchscreen system is very nice. You can actually uh, get into the print settings while it's printing. Uh, I would show you, but it's not printing, so I can't, because you can only get there while you're printing, which I find that that could be a flaw. Um, what else? Also, these were both printed at 50 microns. This machine will actually go down as low as 25 microns, so um, it will double the print time. Uh, and Wonder Woman did end up taking about 13 hours to print. She could stay laying down. She does, this model does come with a base. I just didn't print the base. Um, so let's see, what else? So, all right, so those are the things that I found that I really liked about the printer. Um, again, it is light, it is easy to clean. I've already cleaned the bill platform, just sprayed it off with a little bit of alcohol. Um, another thing, so the resin, the Digit Makers uh, D3D resin, this is really nice. Um, I didn't get any on my hand, so I can't say if it's gonna burn. I don't think it will, because I have yet to be burned by any resin at all. Um, but it's super low odor, um, and it doesn't market it that way, but I, I find that I didn't really smell it at all, um, even when I just opened the bottle. But while it's printing, between the fact that this is super low odor and this has the two uh, air filters in there, I, I didn't smell anything. So that was a huge bonus, because a lot of times on my D7s specifically, I can really smell that resin as it's printing. So that's good because resin is toxic. Um, speaking of resin is toxic, um, we'll call this my public service announcement. If, I mean, always be careful with resin because I've seen horror stories online that you can get burned. Um, I saw one guy whose entire leg got burned. He was all blistered. Um, but always be careful with resin, especially if you have children or pets. I have both. So I'm always super careful about where I keep my resin. I keep it up high on a shelf on the shop over here so no, no one gets near it. Um, I mean, my kids are old enough that they wouldn't attempt to get it, but uh, my pets don't know that resin can kill them. Um, also, when I get it on my hands, I make sure I immediately wash my hands. Uh, any resin that I have spilled up, I always clean it up right away, just because it, it may not really hurt us, even though it can, uh, but it can be fatal to a pet or even to a, a kid, a small kid. Um, so yeah, there's my public safety announcement. Um, so there's that. So now, Digimakers, again, and I will put the link in the box down there, has this resin in stock now. They just got it in. He literally got it in and sent me this bottle. So I know he's got it in stock now. He's got a bunch of different colors. He's got this, uh, the bio base one, and then a standard resin. Priced very reasonably, I think, for Canada. Um, he also does carry the Photon S. And right now, I just spoke to him the other day, and I know right now he's got it on sale. I'm not gonna see the price. So at the time I'm shooting this, this printer is on sale at Digit Makers. Another thing that I did is I actually, I had to go to the dollar store yesterday, so I went to the dollar store, and I ended up picking up some of these glass jar thingies in the food section. So instead of using, this is a Rubbermaid Tupperware-y kind of thing, this is a Rubbermaid one. Um, I was worried that I didn't have something big enough for Wonder Woman as she was printing as I was out shopping yesterday. Um, so I bought this and then I also bought just a smaller one. So if you live in Canada and you know where Dollarama is, I got this for $2 and this one was also $2. Um, and this was perfect. Uh, this is full of alcohol, so this is 91% IPA and uh, she fit in there perfectly. So there's that. So 
hopefully the alcohol won't do anything to the plasticky part on the inside, but if it does, it was two bucks. I'll buy another one, I don't care. One other thing I wanna mention. I am not, although I support a lot of people on Patreon, I'm not one to say, hey, I'm gonna go on Patreon. I don't feel that I have enough content in this channel, at least at this point, to warrant somebody sending me money, you know, once a month on the first of every month. Um, but currently, I'm unemployed, and I'm spending a lot of time uh, working on these videos. I'm spending a lot of money uh, on stuff myself. I bought a new camera, I bought new lights, blah, blah, blah. So I found this really cool thing uh, called Buy Me a Coffee, and that is kind of funny for me because all I drink is coffee. So um, I told a couple people about it, and they were like, oh, Joel Telling uses that, and Uncle Jesse uses that, and I thought, well, why haven't I heard of it? And I would have started it sooner. But yeah, so if you like this video particularly, or any other one of my videos, you can feel free to buy me a coffee. I'll put the link in the in the box down there too. Um, I wanted to go as low as two dollars, but it wouldn't let me. So the lowest I could go is three dollars. So you can buy me a coffee for three bucks if you want. Um, I'd appreciate it. It would help out. I do need to buy a new microphone, so that would help. Um, so yeah. So there's that. So uh, a couple of upcoming videos that I'm going to be working on right now. I have um, the if you've seen the build video or the print and kind of final thoughts video on my on the Anycubic Predator. I am going to be doing a third video on the Predator, which is upgrades. So I did a lot of upgrades and I made a lot of changes to my Predator and I got to tell you, it's amazing. Um, it printed great before, now it is dead silent. It, 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 the quality of the prints is fantastic. So I want to show people what I did and how I did it. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. I also have a ton of... Somebody's running the water upstairs. Um, I have a ton of Palette Plus, Palette 2, Palette 2 Pro videos that I desperately need to make. And those are going to be coming soon too. I have um, some more printers from Anycubic coming. Um, they're actually already here, so I want to start working on those as soon as I can. And then uh, another really cool thing that I want to do that I've never done a video on um, and that I don't have a ton of experience with is I do a lot of like printing for cosplay people that you know take raw prints and they go off and they paint them on their own. But I'm going to do a start to finish movie prop. And I think that's going to be really fun. So hopefully I can do that in the super near future. Um, so yeah. But until next time, don't forget, if you like this video, give me one of these. If you don't like this video, feel free to give me one of these. Any constructive criticism that you have, please leave a comment. Any criticism or praise or you don't like my Wonder Woman shirt, post a comment. Leave it in there for me. Please give us a subscribe. The link is at the has a little button on the bottom corner over here. And uh, until next time, this is Chris of Versus 3D. Take it easy.